With Season of the Haunted in full swing, I thought it would be a good idea to compile a list of the must-have weapons for this season. This list will contain weapons from every activity, from the new dungeon to Iron Banner weapons to some Nightfall activities. But before we get into this list, if you're new to the channel, hi, I'm Brave X Hero and I cover everything Destiny related. But with that, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Now let's get into the list and see what are the must have weapons for Season of the Haunted. Our first weapon is probably the easiest to acquire. Regardless if you purchase the Season Pass or not, we have the exotic sidearm, the Trespasser. This new exotic can be acquired immediately upon purchasing the Season Pass. Or if you're a free to play player, this can be acquired by reaching rank 35 in the free to play Season Pass section. The Trespasser is an exotic 3 burst sidearm with the exotic perk Unrepentant. Reloading after defeating a target causes the next burst to be a longer, more powerful burst. It does have the trait Be the Danger, which final blows with Unrepentant Super Burst automatically reload your weapon and provide an Unrepentant Super Burst. This weapon comes with a catalyst. It comes with a masterwork which grants this weapon tunnel vision. What makes the Trespasser unique is unlike the original Trespasser in Destiny 1 which utilized special ammunition, the Trespasser in Destiny 2 utilizes primary ammo. Overall, this is one of the most deadliest weapons in the current season and as someone who plays mouse and keyboard, the Trespasser is probably one of the most consistent sidearms in the game. I kinda hesitated to put the next weapon on the list since it is a grenade launcher. But after seeing the potential of this weapon in PvP and PvE, I just knew that everyone needs to get their hands on this grenade launcher. Next on the list, we have the Lingering Dread. This grenade launcher can be acquired by completing the new dungeon, The Duality. Now I'm going to be recommending the exact roles for PvP and PvE. Since this is our first stasis grenade launcher, it comes with the newly added perk, Chill Clip in which direct hits creates a stasis burst which applies 50 slow to enemies. Now this perk only works on the top half of the magazine and since we're using a grenade launcher, every shot is at the top of the magazine, which means this perk will be activated every time you fire this weapon. To really get the most out of this weapon, you're going to want to go with the perk auto loading holster, which is going to allow you to stow this weapon after using it and it will be automatically reloaded after a few seconds. What really makes this perk combo great is being able to fire this weapon at a target, deal damage, and cause them to slow, which gives you the opportunity to switch to a secondary weapon and secure the kill. While you have that secondary weapon out, the Lingering Dread will automatically reload. As you can tell, lots of synergy happening there. And yes, this concept works in PvE as well. Now, you can always go with Auto Loading Holster and Vorpal, which when it comes to dealing DPS on a boss or an enemy, this will allow you to fire a shot, swap to another weapon to continue to do DPS, then swap back to fire another shot. The next weapon on the list can be considered a clone of the Eyes Luna. We have the new 140 RPM hand cannon, the Ostringer. This hand cannon can be acquired by completing activities and acquiring opulent keys on the Leviathan. Now, why should you grind for this hand cannon? Well, for one main reason. This weapon can be crafted and can acquire enhanced perks. Look, if you're looking to use this hand cannon in PvE, you can really get a lot of use out of the perks Frenzy, Rampage, and even Demolitionist, all of which will grant you either bonus damage or ability energy. Now, these perks can be paired alongside Outlaw, which can synergize well with this hand cannon. But changing gears and getting into why you need this hand cannon for PvP, you can always craft this weapon to be an aim assist magnet with perks such as Eye of the Storm and Opening Shot, all of which can really assist you in those gunfights. Or you can always go with Air Assault and really build into airborne accuracy. After utilizing my crappy roll that I have, I can easily say that this hand cannon feels great and as someone who enjoyed using Eye as Luna, I'm going to craft this weapon as soon as I get a chance. If you're jumping into the new dungeon to grind for a Lingering Dread, you might want to keep your eyes peeled for our next weapon. We have the New Purpose Pulse Rifle. This Pulse Rifle is an aggressive frame, which means it's slow firing but deals a lot of damage. Now this Pulse Rifle can be acquired by defeating the final boss in the Duality Dungeon. This Pulse Rifle comes with some really interesting perks for both PvP and PvE. With perks such as Perpetual Motion and Desperado, that's right, this Pulse Rifle comes with the perk Desperado, 
which was previously only exclusive to the Pulse Rifles, the Messenger, and the Redrix. If you get this weapon with Desperado, players can really take advantage of this weapon's increased rate of fire and bonus damage when the perk is active. For my PvE players out there, another good set of perks that I highly recommend you be going for is going to be Feeding Frenzy and Vorpal, which essentially turns this Pulse Rifle into an ad clearing machine. If you're new to the channel, then you might not know this, but I'm a huge fan of sniping in any game, and our next weapon immediately skyrocketed to number one on my list. We have the sniper rifle, the Beloved. This sniper rifle has one of the lowest zoom magnifications in the game. Not only that, it is a craftable weapon, which should make it a reason for you to grind for it alone. Similar to the Ostringer, the Beloved can be acquired by farming events and obtaining opulent keys on the Leviathan. This weapon requires you to complete five red borders before you can craft it. For PvP, I highly recommend you aim for the perk combo, snapshot, and quick draw. Even though these perks got nerfed, players can still benefit from these perks in any PvP activity. But I wouldn't discard any roles with the perk Surplus. With the nerf to snapshot and quick draw, Surplus has been a fan favorite for any player looking to improve handling on any weapon. Personally, I'm glad this weapon came back, and I'm glad it's a craftable weapon. It allows me to go for my god roll and get some enhanced perks on it. Our next weapon caught the entire community off guard. We have the Iron Banner submachine gun, the Hero's Burden. This submachine gun can be acquired by ranking up with Lord Saladin, and once you unlock it, players have the ability to focus their engrams for more chances at their god roll. What makes this weapon interesting is unlike our current 900 RPM SMGs, the Hero's Burden is a 900 RPM adaptive frame. Now this SMG may lack in the lethality department, but it does come with some interesting perks. With perk combinations such as Zen Moment and Kill Clip, players can really lean into how lethal this SMG can be. But if you're feeling crazy and you don't care for stability, players can go for the max range roll if they go with the perk Iron Reach. This really cuts into your stability, but it can give you 22 meters of range before you start to see any damage drop off. Look, Iron Banner may not be your cup of tea, but this SMG might be the golden ticket you need to start playing it more often. Rapid Fire Pulse Rifles have been the meta for a few seasons now, and with Season of the Haunted, Bungie reintroduced a Nightfall specific Pulse Rifle. Up next, we have the Horrors Least. This Pulse Rifle can be acquired by completing the Nightfall when the Horrors Least is available. The Horrors Least comes with a really rare perk. That perk is Kill Clip. It's been several years since Bungie put the perk Kill Clip on any Rapid Fire Pulse Rifle, and with the addition of Horrors Least, this should be a perk all players should aim to acquire. Aside from the perk Kill Clip, players might want to go with the perk Under Pressure, Zen Moment, or even Perpetual Motion, all of which will only enhance this weapon's ability. Currently, I'm utilizing a Sunset version of this weapon, and all I can say is that this thing shreds. Our next weapon on the list became an instant favorite for me. As someone who loves SMGs, the Enyo D was immediately at the top of my list to acquire. This is a 600 RPM SMG for the kinetic slot that can be acquired as a worldly drop. Regardless if you're using it in PvE or PvP, I highly recommend you aim for the perk combo, Feeding Frenzy, and Rampage. One of the biggest drawbacks to any hockey style SMG is poor reload speed, but that can be easily overlooked when you have the perk Feeding Frenzy. And if you really want to boost the damage potential of this weapon, players can always slot a Rampage spec under their SMG, which can boost the perk Rampage by one more second, which is extremely noticeable in any PvE and PvP activity. Now, the Horrors Least wasn't the only Nightfall weapon to return to us. We also got the revamped version of the DFA Hand Cannon. This Hand Cannon is another 140 RPM Hand Cannon that can be acquired by completing the Nightfall when it's an available drop. This has to be one of the best looking weapons in Destiny 2. I don't know why, but I get a new monarchy vibe from this weapon. Now I'll keep this one short. If you compare the DFA hand cannon to hand cannons such as Ostringer and Eyes Luna, the DFA falls short on base stats. But since it is a nightfall weapon, this means players will be able to acquire an adept version of the DFA. This would allow players to slot adept weapon mods which would essentially put this weapon on a leveled playing field or give it a slight advantage. 
What makes this weapon unique is that you can acquire perks such as Perpetual Motion and Time Payload. Personally guys, I would wait and grind for an adept version of the DFA. And don't waste your time grinding a basic version. Our last weapon on the list is another one from the dungeon. We have the Linear Rifle, the Storm Chaser. Now I rarely cover PvE weapons, but I couldn't overlook this DPS monster. When it comes to dealing DPS, players tend to gravitate to either swords, rockets, or linear rifles, especially when it comes to game modes such as Grandmaster Nightfalls. What makes this linear rifle such a great weapon is its perk combinations. With perk combinations such as Auto Loading Holster and Firing Line, or Auto Loading Holster and Frenzy, players can deal massive amounts of DPS without missing a beat. Being able to swap to another weapon while your linear rifle reloads itself is a huge benefit when you're trying to melt the face of any boss in Destiny 2. And there you have it, the best weapons for Season of the Haunted. I'm glad I was able to get this video as quickly as I did, since this will allow players to get a head start on acquiring their god rolls. If you enjoyed today's video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more Destiny 2 content, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. I truly appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with me today. You have a good one, and I will see you in the next video.